chapter 6, verse 4. Reading sake, we can read verse 5. And we also had Colossians chapter 2, and that's verse 9. I also have a reader tonight to help me. If you have it, somebody say amen. The word of the Lord says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. If you serve the same God that Israel served, the ones that wrote this Bible, this Judeo Bible, they said, they declared, they said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Verse 5, And thou shalt love the Lord Yahweh Jehovah, thy God, with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, notice, and with all thy might. Colossians chapter 2, verses 9. The book says, For in him, in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Again, this is part eight and we'll end it here, I'm sure. I know until the Lord comes back, we'll be going over this again for us as saints and for new converts that will come in and hear and they will get some understanding and revelation by the Holy Ghost. Let's pray, saints of God. We also want to pray for those that are sick and shut in. Pray for Sister Myers, Mother Jock. Pray for these. Uh, they had to, go, had to go to the hospital. and We ask God to touch their bodies and raise them up for those that are sick and shut in. I thought I saw Sister Jessica. She was not feeling well as well. But we're glad to see. I thought I saw her earlier. But we want to continue to pray for all of our brothers and sisters uh, in Jesus' name. So let us pray. Father, we love you and we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your loving kindness toward us. Thank you for allowing us to be in your number one more time. For this is a day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. You are, Lord God, the one that has allowed us to be here today. Thank you, Lord God. I ask that you, Lord, touch, Lord God, those that are sick and shut in. I pray for Sister Deborah Cromer, her husband, God. I pray that you would touch his body right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, for those, Mother Sister Myers, God, Mother Jock, in the name of Jesus. I ask that you lay your hands. I'm asking you touch the saints. I'm asking that you touch the minds and the hearts, God. We come tonight to learn. We come to be in your praise and presence, oh God. And we lift the name of Jesus up higher and higher and higher. I ask that you, God, when we all leave here, we can say it was good that we were here. We come to learn about the oneness. Lord, give us revelation. Give understanding. Let things be, so Lord God, clear unto us to be able to be a witness and testify of thy word, God. Thy word is truth, oh God. We ask that your will be done, God, binding every spirit of distraction, every slumberness and every sleepiness, oh God. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, can we all all say amen amen clap your hands one more time as you're being seated in jesus name amen amen and do me a favor you put your phone on vibrate that it doesn't go off in the middle of the study tonight in jesus uh, this the oneness of god those that are watching live uh, we've been doing a study on the oneness of god and you can mark it down this is part eight this is part eight so you can go back and do the study on that and you can go back to know what you want to read what you want to go over this is part eight all right you can look at the archives as well our subtitle is search notice search the scriptures grab your bible pick up your bible start to read mark things down and search the scriptures search the scriptures i always say uh, never feel that you know everything Never feel that you know everything, even on a particular subject. There is much more to learn regarding the revelation of Jesus Christ. The more revelation or the more he reveals to us, uh, then I would say the greater, the greater that would be for the child of God. Amen. With that being said, someone say, well, why are you teaching this? Because we need to know this. 
I don't want us to just get into this place where we just become churchgoers, that we hear preaching messages, that we just shout, and that we do all of that, but really we don't understand and know the Bible. Really we do not understand what the Bible is saying. I don't want to claim to be a Christian and I don't know about Christ. I don't want to claim that I'm a churchgoer, that I'm a saint of God, and I don't know nothing about God. I don't have the revelation of who God is. Amen. So we don't just want to be churchgoers. I don't want to just say I'm a member of a church. This is where we assemble, the Church of the Living God here in the Glade area. And this is where we assemble. But we need to come here like they did. They would go to the synagogues. They would go to the temples. Uh, they would have church in their homes. And this is where we know that we have church today. They will meet and they will assemble, watch this, in their home. They didn't have the edifice today, but now we understand this is all an example of the house of God the temple of God, the church of the living God, and this is where we assemble. So they will assemble in their homes, and they will not forsake the assembling of themselves. But I know that you and I, we can't go into each one of your homes because some people will say, no, I don't have that much room. I get it. So what do we do? We come together, and we assemble together just the way that they did, and we today are assembling to talk about the oneness or this one God. And so in our last discussion, we spoke about how having a biblical foundation, saying of God, it is a must. You and I must have a biblical foundation. This has to be a church that is Bible-based, Bible-based, amen, where we celebrate, where we walk, where we worship and praise based on what the Bible says. I understand there may be some things that I will say that are neutral. What I mean by that, I mean there are things that are there that, watch this, it is not a heaven and hell. I'll put it that way. Meaning, I'm not going against the scripture, watch this, here's an example, by wearing a gray suit. Does that make sense? I hope that's simple. Uh, meaning that you're not, watch this, somebody say, well, we're going to be Bible-based. Why are you not wearing what they're wearing? Well, you don't have understanding. Hear me. But I'm saying to you, when it comes to salvation, when it comes to how we worship, when it comes to what the Bible is saying regarding how we are to live, that needs to come, watch this, from the Word of God. Amen. And so we must, we must, it is a must to have a biblical foundation. And the foundation must be, watch this, written. Can somebody say written? That foundation must be written. Meaning, if somebody says something about our God, then we have to ask them, show me where that is written. And when you read it out loud, it has to say that. Does that make sense what I'm saying? It has to say it. It has to say it. Now, don't get me wrong. In the scripture, there's greater revelation, but you have to watch this. Divide it correctly. Scripture interprets scripture. But you can't just come and make up something that's not what's being said. And you just can't take a scripture out of context and just say, well, this is what that's, that's saying. Does that make sense what I'm saying? With that being said, the foundation must be written. It cannot be made up. It cannot be someone's personal interpretation or opinion. If somebody say, that's my interpretation, then you know that they're wrong. When somebody say, well, this is my opinion, you know that they're wrong. When somebody say something like this, well, my pastor said this. Well, I get what they're saying with their pastor, but you need to ask them, show me where that is written. Can we say that again? Can we say written? It has to be written. Amen. You can't build no other foundation. I want you to read for me 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 11. Go ahead and read that, sir. This is what Paul said to the church of Corinth. You can go back and read all what I'm saying tonight in its context so that you'll see that I have not taken it out of context. If you see that, believe me, I don't feel that you're challenging me. I love the questions. So please, if you say, well, pastor, you said this. I don't understand it. Or pastor, you quoted this. Now, that was not in the context. I'm saying to you, come back to me. Let's talk. I want to be able to talk. I want to be able to see what you're saying. Amen. I want to make sure I'm giving you truth. Amen. I want to make sure you're getting truth according to what is written, not some tradition. All right. The Bible says for, for watch this, for other foundation. Go ahead, sir. For other foundation can no man lay. Then that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. What is that letting us know? You cannot lay down any other foundation. 
You cannot try to come up with any other thing. The foundation that was laid down, brother and sisters, it was Jesus Christ. Knowing the revelation of who Jesus Christ. This is why Jesus asked, notice who do man say that I am? It was Peter. Not to say that only Peter knew. I believe that the other disciples did. Watch this. From the time be able, watch this to get revelation. But I believe that Peter was bold. He was one of the bold ones. And, and Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, Peter. But it was my father. When he said, my father, that is the spirit, brother and sister. The spirit revealed this to you. The spirit gave you the understanding or the revelation. And that is the same thing that you and I talk today. That talk is this. You will never understand the word of God, but by the Holy Ghost. You will never understand the word of God if you don't have the spirit or the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Ghost is the teacher. The Holy Ghost is what reveals to us. The Holy Ghost is what will actually prick your heart or convict your heart. Or it will keep you, watch this, on the straight and narrow. It will keep you, brother and sister, on the straight and narrow and in truth. Amen. And so this is what I think a particular scripture should, we should use to set the foundation. We talked about it last time. But I want to use it again and you can go back. I will use it, watch this, in the scripture tonight. Pull up for me 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Notice verse 13. I want to use this as a foundational scripture as well. This is what Paul said, and I want to show you something. This is what Paul said. Notice what he's saying. I'm using it, and I understand in the context. Also, you can use principle in the New Testament as well. The book says, watch this, we having, go ahead. We having the same spirit of faith. We having the same spirit of what? Faith. Faith. Belief. We having the same spirit of faith. Same spirit of belief. Notice it says, according to as it is what? Written. According to as it is written. Not somebody's opinion, not a suggestion, not somebody's denomination, but according to as it is, watch this, written. And when you see something in the scripture, watch this, throughout the word of God, you've heard this, even the word of God speaks about it in the gospel, out of the mouth of two or three, let every word be what? Established. Even in the book of Deuteronomy, out of the mouth of two or three, let every word be established, which means, brother and sister, when you study the word of God or somebody's teaching you, I know in an atmosphere like this, it may be hard because we'll be here all night. But say if you're in a Bible study, say if, watch this, you're teaching a Bible study, you want to show them, watch this, two or three scriptures that go with what you're teaching about or what you're saying. Does that make sense what I'm saying? I know on Wednesday night, Sunday and Sundays and Sunday nights, we're not able to do that because it'll be a long, it'll be a long, a long type of service. And I know people will get antsy and say, okay, pastor, it's time to go. But I want to be able to make sure that you know that as saints of God. And so he says it again. Paul says it again to the church of Corinth. Watch what he says. We having what? The same spirit of faith according as it is written. So now if you got the same spirit of faith or the same spirit of belief according to as it is written, notice what should you do? I what? I believe. You have to believe it. Now, once you believe it, your belief also shows with action that you believe. Because faith without works is what? Dead. So when people say, I believe, then watch this. It has to back up with what they do. So you can't say you believe if you don't do what the scripture says. Does that make sense what I'm saying? You can't say you believe, watch this, if you don't do, if you don't believe the way they believe. Does that make sense? So we can't come up with our own Christianity, our own belief. We have to believe it the way they believed it. The way they spoke about him. The way they testified about him. And so the book says we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe, therefore I have what? Spoken. So if you don't believe the way that they believe, don't speak nothing. If you don't believe the way they believe, they, that preacher should not be preaching. That preacher, that teacher, that minister, that elder, that evangelist, that person should not be preaching or opening up their mouths because they don't believe it the way they believed it. And the book says, therefore, I have spoken. Go ahead, sir. Finish. We also what? We also believe. Therefore what? Therefore speak. All right. 
Again, our scripture text. We talked about the Shema. The Shema is found again in our scripture text. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. That's his hero Israel. The Shema Israel. Adonai Ehanu Adonai Echad. That is basically what, again, we talk to you about this. When a child or Hebrew baby is born, when that baby comes out of the womb, they will take the child or the mid mother, midwife mother will take that child out of the womb. Once that happens, lay it on the mother's chest. And the first words that that child, that infant will hear will be, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. I don't know about you, but brothers and sisters, um, with Zoe, I definitely, I did that. I remember when we first got Zoe out of the um, hospital, uh, she was born premature, she was born one pound, eight ounces, her name, Life. And so we left that hospital. I looked at Sister Garmin and I said to her, uh, babe, we're going to church. She said, all right. I said, we're going to go to church and we're going to take Zoe and we're going, she's a little old thing coming out of the hospital. And we're going to put her on the altar. And we, I know we're going to do a dedication. But we coming home from the hospital. We driving up to the church in uh, Tampa. We grabbed it, baby out the car seat. Came right in the church. The doors was open. We told they knew what we was coming for. And we just went up to that altar, put that altar, that baby uh, on, the, and on the altar. And we begin to pray. And I have said these words, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And I'm saying, saints of God, you and I need to put this in our children, that they will know that there is only one God. There is only one Lord. And you need to let them know who he is. It is Jesus the Christ. Amen? Amen. And our second scripture text, Paul, he talks about our wonderful God, and he says these words about this one God through Jesus Christ. Notice, this one God through who? Jesus Christ. Christ. Go ahead, Colossians 2 and 9. We read it. I kind of gave in a description of it when we first started. For in him who, Jesus, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Do you see that? I want you to put it in the NLT for me, please, if you can, uh, to the AV team. For in Christ lives, here's a simple way, all the fullness of God, where is it? In a human body. It's in a human body. So I want you to see some other scriptures speaking regarding this too. We talked about it out of mouth of two or three. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 19. We read this before. Exactly what you just read. Now watch what it says again. Paul says it again right here. I want you to see it in the book of Corinthians when he's talking to the church of Corinth. Go ahead, sir. What does it say? To what? To with God, that God was in Christ. Where is God? In Christ. Where is the Father? In Christ. Where is the Spirit? In Christ. It's in Christ. Do you see that? It was not another person in Christ. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's not another person. The Trinitarian would say God in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, God in three persons, personalities. There was not another person in a person. God is not a person. Notice he's a spirit. Does that make sense? His person, watch this, is the Christ, the son of the living God. But God is a spirit. So he says to these words, go ahead one more time, to wit what? To wit that God was in Christ. And what was God doing? What was the spirit doing in Christ, in Re that body? Reconciling the world unto himself. Go ahead, sir. Not imputing their trespasses unto them and had committed, committed unto us the world, the word of reconciliation. I want you to see this right here, people of God. Many people today do not recognize Jesus as the Father. They will say he's just the Son. They will say or question you, why y'all all spend time on Jesus, but y'all never talk about the Father. My grandmother would say that. My grandmother said one time to my mother, she said to her, she said, Gwen, you, you guys talk all about Jesus, but what about the Father? She didn't understand <laughs> that when we were talking about Jesus, we were talking about the Father. She didn't understand that when we were talking about Jesus, we were talking about the Father. And so, Grandma didn't have the revelation. And so, brothers and sisters, it is the same thing. Go to what Apostle Thomas, I want you to see Thomas, basically who we call the doubting Thomas. Look at John chapter 20. 
And look at verse 24 and 31. We're going to read this. Many people don't have the revelation of who Jesus is. They don't know who he is. I believe that many people are sometimes like doubting Thomas. <laughs> Notice the book says, we'll read it in the KJV. The Bible says, but Thomas, go ahead. But Thomas, one of the twelve, uh -huh. called Didymus, yes. was not with them when Jesus came. So Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus came back to life. Jesus is no longer uh, in the grave. He comes back. He has a glorified body. He's doing things he didn't do before. What is he doing? Showing up, walking through walls, disappearing. And so they're trying to let people know, hey, Jesus is alive. And now Thomas is saying, I won't believe it until I see it. I won't believe it until I say you, it got to be revealed to me that I see that I can that I know Jesus is alive it got to be revealed to me and I'm saying to you many people will not believe watch this that Jesus is God that he's the father until what it's revealed to them till it's revealed to them brother Brian the book says watch this the other go ahead the other disciples therefore said unto him uh -huh. we have seen the Lord uh -huh. but he said unto them except ye shall see it in his hands the print of the nails uh -huh. and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side yes i will not believe i will not believe go ahead notice the verse 26 and after eight days again his disciples was within uh-huh and thomas with them then came jesus the doors been shut what was the doors at shut so the door wasn't open but he just appeared no the book says and what and stood in the midst and said peace be unto you peace be what unto you and said what then said he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger, uh -huh. and behold my hand, yes. and reach hither thy hand, yes. and thrust it into my side, yes, sir. and be not faithless. Don't be doubtful. Don't be unbelieving. But he's telling Thomas, believe, man. I'm saying that these 12, many of them, they walk with God. They saw a lot of things, but still didn't understand. I'm saying the same thing today. Many people that watch this so-called walk with God. Many people that hear about Jesus but still don't believe. So I don't want you to watch this. This is why I'm praying only God can give revelation. I don't want you to repeat, just repeat, just repeat what the preacher is saying. But I want you to get into your heart to say, God, I got to know for myself. I don't just want to repeat that there is one God. I don't want to repeat that the Shema. All of this is good. But you and I need to have a prayer to sit there and say, God, give me the revelation. Give me the revelation. I can tell you, I remember <laughs> I was reading the book of John. I was reading the book of John. And I got to John chapter uh, 1 verses 14. And as I was reading, I kept going. I screamed so loud in the house. I screamed so loud. Now, I was raised apostolic. I was raised knowing that Jesus was one, was the God. He was God, and there was only one. But this particular day, I'm in a house, and I just started screaming, Mother Smith. I said, oh, Jesus is God. And nobody else was excited with me. Nobody else was excited with me, Mother Corinthians. I said, Jesus is God. Now, the reason why I was screaming, because watch this, that was the time my eyes came open. Did you hear what I'm saying? That was the time that I'm just, watch this, I'm picking up the Bible, and I'm reading it myself. I'm not reading to read it, watch this, in Sunday school. I wasn't really, you know, reading it while I was in church. I was just at home this particular day, and I just opened it up, and I just started reading. And as I was reading, I read the book of John. And when I got to verse 14, I just said, and I said, <gasps> Jesus is God. But everybody around would be like, yeah, you didn't know that? What I'm saying is I got excited because God gave me revelation. And I'm saying that you and I, somebody got to get excited that God gave you revelation. Do you hear what I'm saying? Somebody got to scream one day and say, Jesus is God. I'm going to say he is God. You got it. You got it. You want to get revelation, amen? At, come on, let's open our mouth and say, God, give me revelation. Come on, say it again. Lord, give me revelation of who you are. The book says in verse 28, and Thomas, what did he do? And Thomas answered and said unto him, uh -huh. my Lord and my God. So when Jesus says to him, put, 
put your hand right here, Thomas. Put your hand on my side. Put your finger, watch this, in my hand. Thomas, who is a Jew, write that down. Thomas is a Jew. And Jews believe, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. For this Jew to open his mouth and he says, watch this, go back to it. Notice what he says in verse 28. Pull it up one more time. Says, He's Thomas answered and said unto him who? Jesus, my Lord and my God. A Jew is saying this, watch this, to a man standing right there. But he recognized, wow, this is God in the flesh. Like this is God standing before me. This man that I'm seeing, this human being, God is in that man. And that man is 100% man, but 100% God. He is the image of the invisible God. The God that you and I could not see. God says, I will reveal myself. And he revealed himself through, watch this, Christ Jesus. Now what you couldn't see, you can see now. What you couldn't behold or hell, you can hold it now. So he says, put your finger right here, Thomas. Put your hand right here, Thomas. Can't no man do this. Can't no man walk on water. Can't no man raise from the dead and walk around. How did I walk in here, Thomas? You didn't hear no door open. I just walked on through in the midst of you, Thomas. I'm saying to you, this is why you got to know who God is. Because he is in the midst of us, people of God. And I come to find out many times we don't know how to act when God is in the midst of us. We don't realize he's in the midst of us. I'm preaching now. We don't realize that he's in the midst. But when you realize he's in the midst of you will say, my Lord and my God. Hallelujah. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. Notice, notice, <laughs> notice what Jesus said. Go ahead, sir. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, uh, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, uh -huh. thou hast believed. Yes. Blessed are they that have not seen yes. and yet have believed. Notice, brother and sisters, you and I ain't seen Jesus. We ain't seen Jesus in the flesh, anybody? You're an angel. We didn't see Jesus in the flesh, but watch this. Yet you believe. Yet you believe, and you didn't see him walk on the water. You didn't see him get crucified and then come out of the grave. You didn't see it. But notice, yet you believe. I believe. The Bible says in verse 30, go ahead, sir. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the present presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Go ahead, sir. Verse but, 31. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. I want you to see that, brothers and sisters. One more. I'm going to give you Philip. We spoke about this one. I want you to see Philip. Can we do me a favor and go on over? John chapter 14. Start at verses 6, please. John chapter 14, verse 6. Thomas wasn't by himself. We had a fellow brother named Philip. Philip too. Didn't know <laughs> who he was in the presence of. The book says right here, go ahead, sir, it is on the monitor. You can read it there. The book says, watch this. Jesus said unto him, go ahead. Jesus said unto him, uh -huh. I am the way. I'm the what? The way. And what else? The truth. And what else? In the life. Well, go ahead, sir. No man cometh unto the Father. You can't come to the Father but by who? But by me. Notice, but by him. Jesus. Go ahead, sir. Verse 7, the Bible says, if ye what? If you had known me, you should have known my Father You should have known my Father. Now, Jesus is talking. He's talking. Watch what he says. He's talking. They're listening. Notice the scripture. And from henceforth, you watch this. Go ahead. You know him. You know him. And what? And have seen him. So now Jesus is saying, you know him. And you've seen them. You know him. And you've seen them. Now Philip is sitting there like. Well, well where you at? Where, where you at? Now this man is doing a lot of different miracles. 
Deaf ears are coming. Eyes blind are being able to see. Deaf people are no longer dead walking around him. Miracles are taking place and signs and wonders. And he walking on water. He doing certain miracles and things, people of God. And this Jesus says to them, you've seen them. The Bible says in verse 7, go ahead, sir, if what? If you had known me, you should have known my father also. You should have known him also. Go ahead. And from henceforth you know him. And what else? And have seen him. Verse 8, notice what it says. Here we go. Philip, Philip, Philip asks a question. Watch this. And I think we need to be more like Philip. When you don't know something, you need to ask questions. Yes, Saints of God, let's stop walking around like we know yes. when we really don't. Because you'll get in a situation, and if you don't know, you'll be sitting there twisting like, um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. We need, to, we need to find out what the real thing is. So we need to ask, tell your neighbor, start asking questions. Come on, tell somebody, because we, be, you know, we kind of we hold back. Tell your neighbor, you don't know everything, ask questions. All right? You got to ask questions. So what did Philip do? Philip said unto them, go ahead, what did he say? Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father. Sh show us. You talking about him so much. Show us who he is. And he says, and, and, and it'll, it, it, it'll suffice us. Like, like, I'll be cool once you show me who he is. And the next verse says, go ahead, sir. Jesus said unto him. What did he say? Have I been so long time with you? H have I what? Have I been so long time with you? Uh, Philip, I've been around you. Go ahead. And yet, go and ahead. And yet, has thou not known me? You, you didn't know me, Philip? He didn't say you didn't know him. He said you didn't know me. You've been around me and you don't even know me, Philip. Notice what he says after that. What? Go ahead, sir. He that had seen me had seen the Father. When you see Jesus, you see who? You see God. You see the Father. And how says then, thou then, why are you saying, Philip, show us the Father? Philip, you acting like you don't know me. Philip, you acting like you, you don't know. This is not a second person, y'all. It's not a second personality. He says, as thou sayest to thou then, how did you say it? That show, us the, show us the Father. Go ahead, sir. Verse 10. Go ahead. Believest thou not that I am in the Father? Where is he? In the Father. Jesus says, I'm in the Father, and watch what he says. And what? In the Father in me. We read that in Corinthians. He says, to wit, God was where? In Christ. And guess who where we are? We are, watch this, in Christ. Where are we? In the body of Christ. But where is Christ today too? He's in me. He's in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Are you getting this, people of God? Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, go ahead, sir. I speak not of myself. This body is not so much what I want you to see, but I want you to know the one that is in the body. He says, go ahead, but the Father. But the Father that dwelleth in me. Dwelleth where? In me. What is he doing? He doth the work. He the one walking on water. He the one raising from the dead. Do you hear what I'm saying? Can you tell me, people of God, that if we die before we wake, what is the only thing that can get you out of that grave? It is the Spirit of God. If you don't have that, you're not coming out of that grave. So like Jesus was raised, the Father will raise you and I too. How? Because the Spirit dwells there. Can somebody say amen to that? This is the problem we have today, that many cannot accept the God that we serve. They cannot accept that God revealed himself, notice, through the man, Christ Jesus. The thought of saying God became a man or God manifested himself in a body as a man. To some people, that doesn't make sense. You talk to some Muslims, they will say to you, we, we, we just don't believe that. Why would God ever want to come and be a man? Why would he ever lower himself to be a man? A man? 
If God didn't come and manifest himself in the flesh, brother and sister, you and I would be in total damnation. We wouldn't have a chance. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm glad that God came and lowered himself, humbled himself to that cross and died for our sins. Can we say amen to that? Jesus Christ was fully man and fully God. Can you write that down? Fully man, 100% man, and 100% God. Meaning he got tired and sleepy. He got hungry, people of God. We know that God never sleeps, never slumbers. You can't feed God. God is not like you and I. He says in the scripture, if I was hungry, I wouldn't even tell you. You can't feed God. You hear what I'm saying? But Jesus Christ, fully man, 100% and 100% God. Notice, he was a man according to the flesh. He was the son of man according, watch this, to the flesh. Don't get confused. Do you hear what I'm saying? Notice the scriptures again, Romans chapter 1 verse 3. Pull that up for me, please. Read that, sir. Romans chapter 1 verse 3, write this down. I'm looking at the time. The book says, watch this, go ahead, sir, concerning. Con concerning his son, Jesus Christ. The begotten one, the one that was made, the one has a start date, the one that came through that version, Mary, the one, watch this, that was call called his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Concerning his son, the one that God made, the body that came out of that version. Notice, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made, go ahead, sir, of the seed of David, According to the flesh. According to the what? Flesh. So he was the seed of David or the son of David according to what? To the flesh. But as we said before, he was David's God. He was Mary's son, but he was Mary's God. Do you see that, people of God? I want you to pull up Luke chapter 3. I had a Hebrew Israelite one time try to tell me... <laughs> That God was not Jesus' father, Joseph was. Hebrew Israelite tried to tell me that <laughs> the spirit of God did not kind of overshadow that body. Uh, tried to tell me that Jesus' real daddy was Joseph. His real daddy was Joseph. So here's the scripture for you to be able to jot down if that foolishness ever come across to you. The book says, notice, sir, and what? Go ahead. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like, like a dove upon him. Uh-huh. Go and ahead. And a voice came from heaven which said, thou art my beloved son. Uh-huh. And thee I am well pleased. All right. Verse 23. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed. Notice the scripture says, Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being, watch this, as was supposed. As was, notice, supposed the son of Joseph. As was supposed, Joseph raised him. But Joseph wasn't his father. Did you hear what I'm saying? Joseph raised him. But Joseph wasn't his daddy. You hear what I'm saying? Put it, put it in the NLT. Put another version. See what that. Notice what it says. Go to verse 23. Go ahead. Read that, sir. Jesus was about 30 years old when he began his public ministry. Jesus was what? 30 years old when he began his public ministry. Go ahead. Jesus was known as the son of Joseph. He was known as the son of Joseph. As was supposed to be the son of Joseph. Do you hear what I'm saying? But we know that Joseph was not his real daddy. That seed was planted by God. Do you hear that? Amen. So whoever plants the seed, that's the father. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Whoever plants the seed, they are the father. Joseph didn't plant that seed. God did. And by God planting that seed in Mary, he is, watch this, the father. Does that make sense, y'all? All right. I want you to see that. John chapter 1, verse 14. 
which is what I said I got excited about. Go ahead, sir. And notice. And the word was made flesh. The word was what? Made flesh. Because the word was where? In the beginning. And in the beginning was the word. And the word was what? God. And that word, which is God, what happened? Was made, go ahead, flesh. And what did it do for them? And dwelt among us. And we what? And we beheld his glory. Uh -huh. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Yes. Full of grace and uh -huh. truth. Full of grace and what? Truth. And truth. Another understanding we need to look at, saints of God, are the greetings from Paul's letters. Another truth that you need to look at is the greetings from Paul's letters. You want to get your Bible, watch this down. I say to you, don't just look at the monitor, but please use your notes and your Bible because this will go directly over your head. I'll make it as simple as possible. Hear me. Uh, it is an understanding. When you read the epistles, when you read the letters that are written to the church, when you look at Romans and Corinthians, when you see people of God, the uh, Galatians, when you go through the word of God and you see, you will see in the letters that it's written in certain verses and it'll say certain things. I want you to see a couple of, and many Trinitarians, watch this, Trinitarians will try to say, oh, see, see, I, let me show you a Trinity and they'll show you this. These, what they will show you is the greetings or the letters that Paul wrote. How he wrote the letters, he'll put a greeting in there, and he'll say something in there. And Trinitarians today will go to that and say, see, that's a trinity right there. You see, the, you see, you see that right there? That's a trinity. I want you to see, you can see a couple. Romans chapter 1, verse 7. I want you to see this. Go ahead, sir, read this for me. To what? To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, Called to be saints. Uh huh. Grace to you in peace from God, our Father. Our Father, comma, and what else? In the Lord Jesus Christ. They say, see, there it is. There it is. There it is. There's the Trinity right there. There it is. You see? First of all, there's not a Trinity right there because where's the Holy Ghost at? Do you see that? It's not a Trinity because where is the Holy Ghost at? The Holy Ghost is not there. So this will basically be a duel. Do you hear what I'm saying? And now that's foolish too. Think about it, people of God. This man, Paul, is a Benjamite. Watch this. He was a Pharisee, which means he knew the law. He's the one writing these letters. The reason why, watch this, and I remember David Bernard said it. I remember Pastor Collins and Bishop. The reason why many today will look at this and try to call it a trinity because what we have in our mindset today is, watch this, the teachings of the Catholic Church. The teachings of the Catholic Church, watch this, they talk about a trinity, God in three persons. But I want you to know, watch this, that came about in 325 A.D., that teaching. And that has been going on through history. So if you've been taught something over and over and over and over and or something has been explained to you in a certain way over and over and over and over so many years, watch this, then watch this. But when somebody shows you something like this, you will think, oh, see, I think that there probably could be a trinity. But I want you to know a Jew writing this, watch this, let me give you background. A Jew writing this will never write about, watch this, a second God. He will never write about a second God. They were monotheistic. So what was he writing this? What were the letters saying? Watch this. Because the Jews, watch this, they worship God. But they would not worship, watch this, Jesus. The Jews would worship Jehovah Yahweh. But what were they trying to introduce to the Jews? This is God in the flesh. So watch this, the Jews were not saved, but watch this, they were still worshiping God. So they were Jews still worshiping Yahweh, but when Jesus shows up, anybody worshiping him? But that's God in the flesh. So they would worship God, they'll worship Yahweh, they'll worship him, they'll talk about how God is, they're doing the laws, but this man standing there is God in the flesh. But to them, they like, anybody think about him? So when he would write a letter, he would write a letter because there were Jews that were still in the church. So he would have to tell them, notice, go back to the scripture. He would tell them in the scripture, pull up Romans for me again. Romans chapter 1 verse 7, to all that be in Rome, many Jews were in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Grace to you and peace from God our Father. 
That's the spirit. But you cannot recognize God without recognizing Jesus Christ. Do you hear what I'm saying, y'all? So it's not a trinity, it's not a door, but he's trying to get the Jews to see, listen, remember salvation, remember you're only a saint by what? Through Jesus Christ. Because you wouldn't be able to get to God. There is no atonement of your sins. There is no forgiveness of your sins. There is no way for you to be right before God or justified before God. Remember Jesus. Which is why, hear me, many of the Jews will still walk around saying, all y'all who so-called saints need to be circumcised. Because they were Jews. They were saying, you got to follow the laws of Mosaic laws and you got to be circumcised. But what Paul was trying to let them know, no, we're circumcised in the heart. It's a spiritual thing. Because the Jews was only focusing on what they knew, which is the one God. But having an idea that that one God came in the flesh, it was hard for them to believe it. So what did Paul have to keep doing? You'll see this in the letters. You'll see this in the letter. Let me show you another one. Go to 1 Corinthians. Notice. Put, look at verse 8. Go to verse 8 and then look at Corinthians 12. You can go through all of the epistles and look at it. Notice what he says in verse 8. Go ahead. Who what? Who shall also confirm you unto the end. That what? That ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because who's the one that you're going to be standing before? Jesus. You hear me. You're going to be standing before Jesus. Only one is on the throne. That is the Lord on the throne. And that is the Lord Jesus. He's the one that's the judge. And so the book says, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Look at verses 3. And we'll go to verse 9. Go ahead. Grace be what? Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. I thank my God always on your behalf. For the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. Stick with me. Go back to verses 4. I need that monitor. Stick with me. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 4. Those that are watching live, I need you to stick with me so that they can get it. I don't want no one to be confused. Verse 4. Read that one more time. I thank what? I thank my God always. On what? On your behalf. For what? For the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. How is grace of the God given to you? By Jesus Christ. By Jesus Christ. You better remember him because you can't get to the Father. But by who? Jesus Christ. And so he says, watch this, that in everything, watch, go ahead. That in everything you are enriched by him. Uh -huh. And in all utterance and in knowledge. Go ahead. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. Uh-huh, go ahead. So that ye come behind in no gift. In no gift, go ahead. Waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Who shall also confirm you unto the end. That, that ye be what? Blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is what? God is faithful. Uh huh. By whom you were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen to that. And so saints of God, again, I, I, I say this to you so that way that you're not confused. God is a spirit. A spirit cannot die. A spirit cannot shed blood. You can't put God in the grave. <coughs> so humans die. Is the one that sinned. Humans are the one that sinned. So a human needs to have, watch this, an atonement or somebody to die. <clears throat> and if we don't have anybody perfect to do that, who's perfect? Only God is. So God had to do what? Manifest himself in the flesh and die for our sins. That's the only way that you and I are able to be here today. This is why we're saying to you, do you realize what Jesus did for you and I? Do you realize that he was he bled on that cross? Do you realize he gave you an, an opportunity, watch this, that we might be saved? That many people, watch this, uh, they will not accept this salvation. They will not accept Jesus as the sacrifice or the atonement. They will not accept this grace that he's trying to give you and I. They will not accept it. Do you hear what I'm saying? They just want to be able to live, believe God the way they want. But God says, I got to die for them because there is nobody else. And what did he do? I'm going to come in the flesh and I'm going to do things that only God can do. Hear me. And when he came, many people saw the miracles, saw the signs. They got some of the blessings. 
but when it came to really giving them and telling them who he was and what he wanted to give them notice as you see later down in the reading of the stories who is the ones that crucified Jesus it was the Jews and I don't want to be like that I don't want to see the miracles and the blessings. I don't want to see these things and the opportunity that I got to know who Jesus was to be able to be saved and to know that who he is and I get all the blessings and the miracles. Watch this. And I get upset because he ain't giving me what I want or doing what I want and I don't believe him and I just want the stuff and I say crucify Jesus. Forget Jesus. I'm just going to worship God. You can't worship God without Jesus. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm going to end it with this. I want you to see. So when you see, watch this, as I said, the spirit of God. We don't believe in three in three persons, Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. We believe God manifests himself. We believe that the spirit, watch this, will operate in this way, that way, that way, but is one same spirit or one God. How many, again, can raise your hand and say that you have the Spirit of God in you? You have the Spirit of Christ, Jesus in you. How many can say, I do, I do? I asked this question before. So does that mean, I don't, I don't know how many in here tonight, but does that mean there's a whole lot of Jesuses in here? Huh? Is there a whole lot of Jesuses? <laughs> a whole lot of Jesuses. He put a Z on it. Jesus is this. No, it's the one spirit in all of you. One God. And that one spirit, people of God, has many different operations. It can do many things. It can show up, watch this, at a burning bush. It can be a rock that follow them in the wilderness. It can be a cloud by day. Do you hear what I'm saying? And a fire by night. And he can still be sitting on the throne. He can be a God being baptized by John the Baptist. And a voice, watch this, in heaven. He can be a symbol as of a dove or like a dove. And I'm telling you, all of God is, that's all God. But he's manifesting himself in different ways and, and different operations, people of God. And I'm grateful that I got the Holy Ghost and you got the Holy Ghost. I'm grateful that God is in me and in you so when you put us all together what do we got the body of Christ and who can come up against us people of God do you hear can you clap your hands and just say thank you Jesus I gotta close it like this first Corinthians 12 and 4 watch this I'm gonna close it I promise you watch this because I'll get excited I get excited talking about God revelation of who he is First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4. Notice what it says. Let me break it down. This is like the gifts of the Spirit. Watch this. Now there are what? Diversities of gifts. Diversities of gifts. But, but how many people have got spirits? The same spirit. But the same spirit. So you ain't got a different spirit in you unless you got the devil in you. So when you tell me, you know what I mean, God, you know, he works through me uh, through the gift of prophecy. I'm like, that's the Holy Ghost right there. If you say God works through me, watch this, to divide diverse kinds of tongues. Oh, that's the Holy Ghost right there. When you say God gave me that gift of the interpretation of tongues, the gift of faith or the gift of miracles, the gift of faith. He gave me this gift. He gave me the, uh, uh, the, the, the gift of wisdom and the gift of knowledge. I'm going to say that's the Holy Ghost right there. I'm not talking about another one. It's the same spirit. And there are what? And there are differences of administration. But what? But the same it's Lord. It's the same Lord. Do you see that, people of God? And there are what? And there are diversities of operation. But it's the what? But it is the same God. It's the who? Same God. It's another God. Same God. It's another God. Same God. It's the same God which doeth what? Worketh all in all. Do you see that? So when God is working through you, he can work through me at the same time too. But we're all giving glory to who? That one God. Do you see the scripture, y'all? I'll show this one. I want you to see. 1 John 5 and 20. Let us stand after this. Go ahead. For the Father. John Apostle said this. Go ahead. For the Father. For the Father loveth the Son. Yes, he does. And showeth him all things that himself doth. Do you see that? Go ahead. And he will show him greater works than these 
that ye may marvel. That you may what? Marvel. That you may marvel. People of God, all that things that you see the son does, he can do none of these things. He cannot know these things, but it be of God. Do you see that? First John. Pull up 1 John now, chapter 5, verse 20. 1 John. And we go home. I can get some of these brothers to help me with this podium. Notice what it says. Apostle John says these words in the epistle. And we know, go ahead, that the Son of God is come. Yes, sir. And hath given us an understanding uh -huh. that we may know him. We may what? Know him. That is what? That is true. Because he's the way, the truth, and the life. Go ahead, sir. And we are in him. Where are we? In him. We are where? In him. That is what? That is true. Even what? Even in his son, Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Go ahead. That, this, this is what? This is the true God. Who is it? The true God. He's the who? True God. He's the true God. Not the second God, but he is the true God. Notice, an eternal life only way that you're going to have eternal life you need to know who the true God is and that true God need to be in you and you need to be in him can we say amen to that God bless you let us all stand it is the oneness of God and this was part eight there was so much more but we don't have time but we're grateful that you've come that you've come to learn the word of God we want God to bless you and to keep you we ask God to keep his hands upon all of you and give you greater revelation in Jesus' name. If you're here today, I don't know if you need prayer. I don't know if you need something from God specifically. Maybe someone is here that needs the, God's plan of salvation. There is only one way to be saved. And that is to repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For what reason? For the remission of sin. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you're here today, preachers, ministers, we want to lay our hands upon those that are at this altar right now. Maybe they're looking and asking God for greater revelation that they can teach the Word of God, greater understanding. Maybe somebody has an illness, or maybe someone can stand in the gap for Sister Meyer, somebody stand in the gap for Mother Jock, somebody stand in the gap for those that are sick and shut in in Jesus' name. We want God to touch their bodies. We want God to heal them. We're going to pray right now. Leaders, if you would go and just lay your hands upon them right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you, God, and we thank you. We come to you right now, God, after hearing the word of God, looking at the word of God through the scriptures, oh God. We understand that there is only one God, and Jesus is your name, Lord. Father, we look to you for everything that we have need. You are the source. You are the creator, God. And we are so grateful to know you right now, God. We ask that you blot out transgressions and hide iniquities before your eyes. And God, that we be not judged by you, God. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for dying, God, for our sins coming in the man Christ Jesus. I'm so grateful for you, oh God, for the miracles and the signs and the wonders. Right now, God, these ministers, these leaders are laying their hands. God, somebody that needs to be healed, somebody that mind needs to be regulated, somebody are looking for answers, God. Speak to them now, God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the authority of your name. Father, we pray right now. Lord God, touch every heart, touch every family. Father, I pray for the Weymouth family, Lord God, as they will go on, Lord God. We are grateful, Lord, to be a part of you, Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus, give greater revelation and understanding. Bless those who are financially struggling, Lord God, that if they will be faithful and do what your word says, you will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, oh God. Let us, Lord God, live in unity and in love. Let there be love in this house, oh God. Touch every heart, oh God, that is hardened against you, oh God, that goes against your will and your way. And God, bring us back to unity, oh God, that we work together, oh God, that we raise the standard, oh God, that we love one another as you have loved us, oh God. We give you glory, we give you honor. Take away frustration, take away the confusion, take away the bitterness, take away the hate, take away the jealousy, take away the envy. But let us humble ourselves, oh God, and correct us, reprove us, rebuke us. Lord God, instruct us in the name of Jesus, God, and help us to be your sons and daughters. We'll remember everything you've done. In Jesus' mighty name, we all say, Amen, 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 and Amen. God bless.
bless you god bless you in jesus name we're grateful if you want to go we say to you you can go and get something but to those that are leaders ministers and those that will be of assistant on that service friday saturday please just for just a few minutes i promise let me speak to you real quick you can turn off the monitor in jesus name god bless you in jesus name